And so to finish off, we've got to finish example four and we're going to move on to example five. But we were where we were. We had already processed all of this. We had figured out that initial and now we're already on our second end. So we're right here at my Y, but we're trying to figure out this little gap right here. So to figure that out, we need to evaluate. Okay, we need to evaluate F prime um, at my X1 value. And so real quick, the, the first one was a little bit easier, but real quick, I want you to recognize that that is actually Y because they gave us this information right here. So that's gonna be equal to my X1, so what was it, one half times two minus my Y value at that point, which is eight. So two minus six is negative six, negative six over two is the same as saying negative three. So then we finish off our question, one last time, y2 is equal to the previous y, 8, plus my slope, negative 3, uh, times my, oh goodness, have I been failing to do my change step this whole, my change step this whole time? Yes, I have, or at least that last time, so that's all I did. Okay, so we're only a little bit behind. Nope, not this whole time. My bad. So, negative 3 is the slope, but that's not quite everything we've got for this y3 and i'm going to go back and double check our work real quick uh, because now i'm a little confused on my own work here so y1 would be equal to my initial plus my slope and we know that that slope is okay so that's why we didn't worry about it because the slope canceled out okay so i'm not a crazy person i mean a little bit a little bit crazy let's go ahead and move on to our last one y3 is equal to the previous y x plus that slope negative three times your step size, which is one half. We actually do need it for this one. And so that's going to become uh, eight minus three halves, which is the same as seeing this as 16 over two minus three halves, which is the same as seeing it as positive 13 halves. And so there we have it. There's our end estimate. So we would write F of one is approximately 13 halves. Now our final example I really enjoy because um, this is a little bit closer to kind of an AP style. Now there's lots of AP questions regarding Euler's method. However, them choosing to, instead of giving you that initial Y value, giving you an X and saying, here's the actual approximation. So now you're working backwards, right? That's in essence what they're telling you. That's pretty common on AP exams. But in order to really do this, we're going to start with that same we're going to start with that same table that we love to make. So we know that we need an N. We know that we have X. We know that we have F prime, or in this case, uh, the dy dx. And we know that we have a Y. And so my initial value tells me my X is zero and my Y is K. We don't know what it is. It's currently a placeholder. And I know that we're going to take step sizes of two. And we're going to go all the way until two. So if I do zero plus two, that becomes two. So I really only need one row. That's it. They only want me to get to one row. So I'm going to use the information I have to track back to right here. Well, guess what? I have a little bit of more information. I know that that equals one. Well, if I know that that equals one, I can plug that into the formula just on the other side. So what would this formula have originally looked like? This formula right here would have said y of one is equal to y not plus your slope at x of not, x not, right, times your change step, which is your delta x, which is your two. So my initial y value is k. So we can go ahead and put a k right there, plus my initial slope. Well, we're not quite there yet. We need to pause for a moment and figure that one out. And then times two. We know that. That information is given to us right here. So the only little bit that I'm missing is this pack right here. Oh, and I'm missing this right here. We know y1 is equal to 1. So that's the part I'm missing. We're going to pull it out to the side, and we're going to talk about it for just a second. Well, what do I know that f prime is? That's this equation right here, and I plug in for my initial information. Well, we're going to do the same thing. 3 times 0 plus 2 times my initial y, which is just k, plus 1. Well, that's going to cancel out, and all I'm left with is 2k plus 1. So I plug that in right here, 2k plus 1. And guess what? Are you starting to see that we can get that k by itself and solve for it? Heck yeah, we can. So I'm going to go ahead and continue that simplification. So if I distribute this 2, that becomes k plus 4k plus 2. So I can combine these, and that becomes 1 equals 
5k plus 2. I'm going to get that 2 to the other side. Uh, and that becomes negative 1 fifth equals k. And that's that number right there. k is equal to negative 1 fifth. And that's all they wanted from us, find that k. But again, the biggest thing that I wanted to showcase in this example is no matter which part of the equation you start with, no matter which part of the table you start with, start with what you know. I filled in as much of that table as I could. Then I went back and I kept trying to fill in. I know my original equations. And the main thing about the equations is that I know what they represent. I don't know why not. I know that's the why before it. I don't know uh, M evaluated X sub naught. No, I know that that's my slope in the previous line. I don't say delta x. I know that's my step size. I have to hear it in my head in order to work conceptual problems such as this. But that's about it. So we're going to move on to our closure. And our closure is simply asking three questions. What is Euler's method used for? Ask yourself that. If you can answer that question, then you understand the purpose of Euler's method. Okay. What pattern can you start seeing in those equations? Again, if you recognize your pattern, you're always going to succeed at these questions. And finally, if you have any disconnects that you're feeling, make sure you connect back with me in class next time. Because we don't have a major wrap-up or closure with this, because it really is just a pattern that you have to follow. The more you practice, the better you get at this. Next time, we're going to actually do an AP Connect. I'll pull five or six um, free response questions regarding Euler's method, and I'll have you all just work through them. Do actual AP questions. Okie dokie. See you all next time.